You know, in life there are just events that you'll never forget. And one of those for me took place in Santa Barbara uh, in the spring of 2013. Dallas Willard, who I think has been the greatest thinker about spiritual life, formation, faith, God in our day, uh, was at this conference and I and other folks were there. And it was about the last major event that Dallas did before he died just a couple months later. And his conversation about the nature of God, human life, how do people change, particularly because of what he was facing in his own life, uh, was unforgettable. And he taught them to do everything that he said. Now, by the time he left, there was a lot left to do. And there was a lot of growing to take place. And that is certainly true today, where the main field for discipleship evangelism is in the church itself. And there are the people who are ready to go. And if we will gently present the gospel and reality of the kingdom of God, in the context of the churches where we serve and the communities where we serve, and I realize churches can take many different forms, if we do that, then we will see disciples emerging. So some of my favorite moments in life have been chances when I could sit in the chair next to Dallas and just say, hey Dallas, um, what's joy? Hey Dallas, what does it mean to bless? Hey Dallas, what is a disciple? Hey Dallas, what is faith? And um, Dallas has read everything from Homer on, literally, uh, of significance about the human condition and distilled it all into what does he think. And I actually think the best moments with Dallas are in Q&A sessions where you can get that wisdom in kind of bite-side chunks that all of us are able to access and absorb. So the opportunity to do that, to just sit in a chair with him and say, hey, Dallas, and ask him those questions and see what happened in the moment. And he'll get this little sly glint in his eye and then he'll just drop these statements on you that literally could not come from anybody else, probably because of his mind and probably because of his heart. How do we help people, you know, if somebody wants to think about how's my spiritual life going or how is my soul doing, how do we help people ask and answer that question? Well, very uh, slowly, one at a time, we listen to them. Uh, how is my spiritual life going? I think the next thing is a question and not a statement. What's bothering you? Hmm. You start there. What are you bothered about? That's so different. When I was growing up in the church, the question, if somebody asked, how's your spiritual life going? I would have always thought about, am I having regular quiet times? Yes. Uh, that, that's a list that goes with different denominational groups and traditions and so on that uh, comes with answering that question. But your presentation this morning wonderfully gets at the heart of the issue, which is beyond all the things you might list and categorize and so on. And you, you, what you really want to know is, uh, how are you and God doing? But you'd start with what's bothering you. Yeah, that would be an interesting liturgical it, question. You know, to just start the church service, what's bothering you? And then the people could respond back, and also you. Oh, I think that. <laughs> That would be absolutely revolutionary. Uh, I've known Dallas for about 25 years, and he has impacted me like nobody else has. Um, his writings, his book, Spirit of the Discipline, outside of the Bible, is the biggest impact on my life. And so the chance to do this conference together was really powerful. Then when he got sick, and it was clear that, bar a miracle, he was not going to be on earth for a real long time, uh, it took on a whole added dimension of substance. We actually thought about, just given his health, should we not do the conference? And Dallas said, nope, uh, I want to do it. There are things that need to be said, and this is a chance to say it. Mm -hmm.